my talk is recommended strategies to protect part fish populations in Barbados. And as you saw in the background there, well, as we were loading up, my co-author, Shelly Ann Cox. Background, on, of course, ongoing coral reef de degradation is being caused by interacting stressors operating at both broad levels, ocean warming, acidification, and sea level rise, for example. And at local levels, overfishing, sedimentation, nutrient runoff, species invasion, storm damage, disease, algal blooms, etc. Part fish are considered keystone species in coral reef ecosystems as they're grazers and agents of bioerosion of calcareous, uh, calcareous substrate and thus produce sediment for shoreline stabilization. However, note that part fish are part of a large guild of grazers, including fish species such as ocean surgeons, damselfish, etc., and importantly, sea urchins. Part fish are taken in a number of coastal fisheries that provide an important social safety net for coastal communities. And we fisheries were traditionally resorted to in Barbados during the off pelagic season, and they serve as an important secondary source of income for many people and our more substantial source of income for older fishers who are retiring from the offshore fisheries and tell you the truth of some other um, activities as well. There are 16 species of part fish in the Caribbean with the family dominated by 14 species within the two genera of Sparsoma and Scarus. Now, while all part fish are primarily grazers, some species are also facultative rather than obligate coral um, corallivores, well, they eat coral. At least four extant species in Barbados are known to be um, to eat coral. Scarus tineoptis, princess part fish, the red band part fish, the queen part fish, and the stoplight part fish. So the question is, why should we selectively protect part fish, which is um, a thrust of many um, agencies, um, international agencies, and within the region as well. Now, while part the benefits of algal grazing to the coral reef ecosystem is clear, part fish are actually microphages primarily. They target cyanobacteria and other microorganisms that live on and within the calcium substrate and not actually macroalgae. As such, selective protection from fishing shifts the pressure on other members of the grazing guild that are more important macroalgae grazers. There is much ongoing debate also among scientists as to the relative negative versus positive impacts of part fish um, eating coral on the reef ecosystem health. So this is the case, especially for already stressed reefs and those at risk of further deterioration due to climate change, where any reduction um, in additional reduction in the live coral abundance by part fish, for example, eating it, may significantly negatively impact on the survival, let alone recovery of the whole coral community. In this case, it is even suggested that greater benefits may redound to the ecosystem through protecting non-coral eating species rather than protecting species such as the coral eating species, subset of part fish. Um, I mean, we do, might not agree with all of these um, findings, but um, certainly they have to be taken into consideration. But furthermore, part fish preferentially feed on some of the most important reef building corals, such as the Arbrisella complex. Um, I knew it as Montastria for, my, for all my, most of my years, but in the Caribbean. And these are the bolder corals and the sturdier reef building corals. Coral livery may provide a vector for coral disease transmission and reduce the resilience of coral colonies to acute disturbances like coral bleaching events. Now, a very recent study uh, published in 2020 showed that large scars in corals from part fish predation were unlikely to heal. Here you have at the top a series of um, the healing from a small part fish bite, about the scale is 0.2 centimeters that you see in there. But when they have scraped away um, a larger portion, and this is a 10 millimeter scar um, on the, rock, the, the, the showing the lower series of um, the um, pictures. You will see that, um, in fact, the coral tissue does not regenerate. It, it just can't fill in that gap in time before the, the bacteria then, sorry, the, um, the turf algae takes over. So Bruno et al. summarizes that the protection of herbivorous fishes, especially part fishes, which is the focus of managed resilience, and simply building resilience to recover potential into reef ecosystems by reducing or eliminating stresses is not benign. In large numbers, some part fish can consume corals, increase bioerosion, and reduce coral accretion rates. 
In light of this marked in evidence, selective protection of parrot fishes or any subset of species in the family. Um, in, in the, so if you're choosing to save the correlating ones versus non correlating ones, it's not recommended. Instead, it is recommended to focus on reducing overall fishing pressure on all reef fish species, in particular, including eliminating the incidences of deleterious both fishing and physical damage to the reefs from these fishing activities. And this approach will, of course, also result in a portionate reduction in fishing pressure on park fish. However, this approach must take into account and be sensitive to the real social and economic impacts on the fishing community. So what were the chosen management strategies? These objectives can, of course, only be achieved through strategically structured management policies, plans, and supporting legislation. So what you're looking for is a strategy that gives you the most bang for the buck. In other words, while maximizing the conservation benefits while minimizing the negative impacts on the fishing community. So development of this strategy involved reviewing available information from expert assessments on the fisheries to identify the best options and acceptable levels for reducing fishing pressure on grazing part fish. And the first study I will look at is Gil et al. in 2019, who determined that the respective contributions to total reef fish catches for Barbados were ranked as such, Sennet, spear fishing, fish pot, and hook and line. So you can see Sennet had the, the lion's share of the contribution, fish pot had 10. So in the course of the Sennet fishery, when you looked at it, uh, Mirage et al. did a study of it and found that really and truly, um, the, uh, while the um, number of fish, part fish, um, 9 to 22 metric tons of reef fishes were taken during the season um, by, uh, by the Sennet targeting over reefs, so in other words, a process called chubbing, um, or really 78 to 20, 257 metric tons of the fishing of occurring gates um, was much more valuable. So that given the biomass removed from the reef was significant and only contributed 7% to the income from the fishery, it was considered that we can um, prohibit chubbing as a means to reduce fishing pressure. And we have had consultations with the fishermen, and this has been agreed at least to, to do it for um, a period of time out and then review it after that point. Now, Schumann et al. looked at the um, fishery, the trap fisheries, and found that 61% of the fishers interviewed who would share um, income information, not all did, started with stated that over 50% of their total income was derived from pot fishing. The authors concluded that the fish pot fishery was more profitable than previously thought, and that it contributed a significant portion of fishers' earnings. Now, although part fish were not the most expensive fishing traps, they were in fact the most important in terms of catch composition. And of the gears that take flight part fishes, there's no obvious potential for improving the species selectivity of this gear. So mandating post-capture releases from the traps is of limited conservation benefit and will increase wasteful discards, given that parfish are adapted to living close to the reef and are prone to injurious or fatal swim bladder to bar trauma under conditions of forced ascent as occurs during retrieval of the prop. And they're also susceptible to injury from um, handling, just simply handling them. As such, it was decided that the most appropriate catch reduction strategy in the trap fishery was to cap the number of participants in it. Now, initially, existing participants would be allowed to continue fishing with reduction in fishing pressure over time, affected by natural participant attrition. And simply, similarly, the number of traps per person would also be capped at existing levels of reduction over time as required. Full stakeholder participation as effort with reduction process will obviously be vital to ensure equity and engender the fish support. And these measures must accompany strategies to, to reduce the incidences of ghost fishing, such as the mandatory use of biodegradable escape panels and marking of traps. In terms of the spare fishery, Simpson et al. estimated that there were around half of the 110 spare fishers that she interviewed were involved on a commercial basis with catches dominated by part fish. And the spare fishery is one fishery for which it is possible to set target limits on the number of part fish to be taken, bag limits. Or you can set selective criteria, including the no-take of certain species and size restrictions. In fact, Yves-Marie Bozek et al. suggested that setting a minimum harvest size of less than 30, or greater than 30 millimeters, would in the short term deliver a good balance between ecological and fisheries benefits. This is uh, just to, to give you an idea. 
I, this is, of course, an anomaly, but this is a huge part of fish that was taken off the coast, um, off Martins Bay um, on the east coast of Barbados. So it lets you know that we do have some big fellows and they're still out there, not necessarily on the west and south coast reefs. The success of any of the effort limiting measures proposed here must be based on a legal requirement that participation in these fisheries requires a license. And as such, the 2023 fisheries management regulations requires that a license will be required along with any necessary conditions um, set for participating in the fish pot and the spear fishery. And all fish pots must be inspected to ensure that they are biodegradable, have made of biodegradable materials and include a functional biodegradable escape panel to reduce ghost fishing. And each pot will then be tagged by the division with a tag bearing the fish ID number and the number of pots in the event that it is lost. And no fishing gear is to be set in a manner that it can destroy coral. The regulations also allow for the setting of minimum sizes for any species as required and also allows for restricting the targeting of any species. And any additional legislation will be enshrined as required in the new Sustainable Fisheries Management Development Suite of Laws. There are the supporting fishing effort re reduction strategies in spatial plan that would include the establishment of closed fishing areas. And the government has also embarked on a program to install anchored fads around the island in an effort to draw some of the fishing pressure away from the reefs. So we have to do future work is to develop the necessary implementation strategy and action plans, increase fish report participation in the decision making process, provide the necessary education and guidance to promote conservation and sustainable fisheries. And it is recommend, recommended that concerted efforts be made to rehabilitate the depleted key grazer deantelarm population. And this includes successful so far laboratory rearing of deantelarm larvae and subsequent outplanting. And there are other methods to uh, encourage um, the, um, the, the amount of larvae. So future work, research collaborations with University of the West Indies and other research institutions to conduct age and growth studies, map locations of spawning aggregations to inform the marine spatial planning process, improved catch and effort documentation to support mapping of CPU when integrated with, as we have spoken already, our VMS data, and seriously address the underlying issues that have and will continue to grade our reefs. It's more than overfishing. And I'm giving you an example, that is a picture of the coastline, of the west coastline, showing the, um, by Holtong and just below where Sunset Crest is in 1964. That plan of development of Sunset Crest came about in 1967, where the place was parceled off, lot buildings were built, um, hotel, um, 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 including a, uh, a supermarket complex and, and all of these things and a lot of houses. That's what it looks like now. I say that the urban sprawl has not occurred in the areas that were not, that basically were trees are now taking up with hotels bordering the beach and all every sort of low level of pollution is going in there. If you look, that's what has been developed. And just to look at the top, uh, the area there at the top there shows whole town, the whole town hall as it was at the time. It was the whole town lagoon. Now it's practically, as a friend of mine described it, the whole town gutter. It's been lowered, the, the, the size of it, the width has been greatly reduced. And that means that when you get flooding, you get a lot of extra sedimentation as opposed to establishing the lovely lagoon and fisheries, nurseries that existed in the past. I'll have to show you 50% obliteration of the West Coast Reef. Um, caused when a berm was when offshore berms were put up, and you can see the loss of the actual quarries thanks to that beach process. Thank you. Very much. It was a very very informative presentation on um on a topic that really has uh, the region you know um, region's interest. So I really appreciate it. All right. So in the interest of time, I'll just ask Mr. Kong who was the one with his hand up from earlier to make his comment quickly, and we can continue the conversation in the chat. Mr. Kong? Thank you, Chair. I will try to be as brief as possible. You know that pilot pirate fishes are very critical and important fishing in Jamaica, and we were trying, unfortunately, to go on a certain road, and thankfully we did not. But, you know, thank you so much for putting forward a balanced picture showing that a one fit all solution based on just some biased critical consideration is not at all the best approach. This is the first attempt I've seen 
to consider all the relevant factors and to recommend sensible management of the fishery. Nature is about balance and this one side of a story to try and, 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 and to reach an objective is just unfortunate. So thank you very much. Excellent, my brother. Excellent. And I'm looking forward to getting the full paper. Thank you very much. Likewise, I, I wrote down your email address, Mr. Parker, so you'll soon be seeing an email from me. <laughs> but really, and, and, and I know this is this is a paper that yes, we, thank all, you. we all are interested in seeing. Um, so thank you again. Really marvelous. <laughs>